Hi everyone, I'm Ari Ravitz, the CEO of Transcend Software. If you found this video, you probably have a good understanding of what our software does and you want to understand how it works. I thought I'd take a minute to tell you a little bit about what Transcend does as a company. Our mission is to transform the way that engineering firms, utilities, and technology suppliers assess and design critical infrastructure. Our software helps to automate the preliminary engineering of any kind of vertical asset. And the video you're watching today talks about how we do that for a wastewater treatment facility. The goal is to help enhance the bottom line through cost savings so that companies can reduce the hours spent on non-billable work and to help grow the top line by being able to provide clients with more designs and more design options with more detail in that first 20 or 30 percent of the design that can be automated and to do it in less time from a company culture point of view the idea is that if you automate the first 20 to 30 percent those hours that were previously spent by your super talented engineers can be spent on more value-added activities whether that's value engineering whether it's finding new more sustainable design options or assessing new technologies or whether it's doing new business development work to find more clients. So if you haven't already signed up for our demo, you really should. Just click the link below, and I appreciate your time today. Thanks. Very often when we're speaking with clients and we walk them through the inputs that are used to generate a design, in this case for a wastewater treatment facility, and then the output documents, we get the question, so what happens on the servers? How is the design itself generated? So I thought we'd do this little video just to give an overview of how the designs actually happen on the server side once you hit submit. The starting point for any design is data, and we have two layers of data validation because it's a garbage in, garbage out process. If you have bad data, you're not gonna get a design which reflects the business need. Um, so first on the front end, we're validating the data inputs as you enter them and we're doing things there like ratio checks so for example we'll, we'll check the BOD to COD ratio we'll make sure that the influent ammonia is not higher than the influent TKN um, we'll make sure that your all your inputs are within range um, and then there's a second layer of validation which happens on the server side um, which is an algorithmic validation where we actually run a steady state simulation of that wastewater treatment facility and we make sure that it won't fail, that the data is valid. And if it's invalid, we'll get an error message back and we'll share that error message with you on the front end so that we don't waste time, your time or server time in running the design. Once we have validated data, we start the design. So the first step in designing a wastewater treatment facility is the process engineering step. And here we have algorithms which select each process unit in that wastewater treatment plant and they size those process units. And those are gonna be based on the inputs that you gave us, both the constituency of the wastewater as well as the effluent requirement and then the specific client preferences that you've shared. Once we've uh, selected and sized the units, we run a simulation and we do both dynamic and steady state simulations. We use a third party simulator. We can use any simulator that you uh, or your company uses. Um, and at the end of this process, we have a set of outputs, which are the tank sizes, the process units, and the air requirement for that wastewater treatment plant. From there, we translate the data and we go to the mechanical engineering phase. Here, we have a set of decision algorithms which are sizing each piece of equipment and selecting each piece of equipment. And that's based on an equipment database which we have on our servers, which has all the equipment that would go into a wastewater treatment facility. And based on the process design that was completed, again, as well as the data that you gave us in the beginning, we'll select and size all the equipment from our database. And if you have your own custom database, we can uh, easily uh, change what's in our database to customize it for your own equipment that you prefer to use in your design. At the end of that, you have all the mechanical equipment details. You can think of it 
as a set of parameters which show every piece of equipment and all the major specs, how big that equipment is, what material it's made out of, how much it needs to run, what the power consumption is, and so on. So now we've completed the process engineering phase and we've completed the mechanical engineering phase. And next, we go, and again, we translate that data and we go to the civil and architectural design. And here we are running through a set of algorithms and a, a code base, which includes evolutionary algorithms as well, that are generating a BIM model. If you know the size of every tank and you know every piece of equipment that's gonna go into that plant and you have some basic rules for how a wastewater treatment plant should be connected and designed, you're able to put all that together and in the most space efficient way, generate a full building information model in the cloud for a wastewater treatment plant. And this is a virtual BIM model, so it can be opened in any third-party software. So at this point, we've completed those three elements of the engineering process, and we now have all the data. You, know, you can think of it as tens of thousands of data points that make up that wastewater treatment plant. And we then take that data, and through our document generator module, we generate all the engineering documents that you need. So everything from a process flow diagram to a PNID, to all the civil and architectural documents, to the OPEX calculation for the plant is generated based on the data uh, that came out of the, the previous steps that I mentioned. And these outputs are all um, in PDF and can also be opened in native form in the client's preferred third-party software, be it Word or AutoCAD, Revit, any third-party simulator, et cetera. So that's just a short overview of how it works. Um, once you hit submit and it goes to the servers, this is how the design is generated. And uh, look forward to talking with you more. Thanks.